In John 21.11 it is written, Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. We know that fishes that are caught can represent believers. After all, Christ told Peter he would be a fisher of men. But what is the significance of there being 153 fishes? In this video we will compare John 21 with another example where 153 also occurs, namely the 153 men sent by Ahaziah to see Elijah. Before we consider the links with Ahaziah and John 21, we need to identify some general links between Elijah and this chapter. Girding is a theme particularly associated with Elijah. In 1 Kings 18 verse 46 we read, And the hand of Yahweh was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins, and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. And in 2 Kings 1 verse 8 it is written, And they answered him, He was a hairy man, and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. Girding is also found in John 21. Verse 7 says, now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and he cast himself into the sea. In verse 18, Christ mentions Peter girding himself as one of the tokens of his independence, which he would one day lose. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldst. But when thou art, shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldst not. In the record concerning Elijah, the third, as part of a sequence, occurs on a couple of occasions. In 1 Kings 18, after water had been poured twice upon the altar, it is written of Elijah, and he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. In 2 Kings 1 verse 13, when the captains in their fifties approached Elijah, it was the third group that survived. And he sent again a captain of the third fifty with his fifty, and the third captain of fifty went up. Likewise, a third occurs also in John 21. In verse 14 it says, This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples, after that he was risen from the dead. And in verse 17 we read, He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? In 1 Kings 19, when Elijah cast his mantle upon Elisha, Elisha spoke of how he would follow Elijah. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow thee. In John 21, Christ twice commands Peter to follow him. Verse 19 says, This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. And in verse 22 we read, Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. There is another link in John 21 verse 22 with Elijah, for Christ says, If I will that he tarry. Tarrying is also found with regard to Elijah and Elisha. In 2 Kings 2, prior to being taken away by the whirlwind, Elijah tells Elisha three times to tarry, but each time Elisha insists on following Elijah. In verse 2 we read, And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for Yahweh hath sent me to Bethel. Verse 4 says, and Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here, I pray thee, for Yahweh hath sent me to Jericho. And in verse 6 we read, And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, here, for Yahweh hath sent me to Jordan. Having identified some general links between John 21 and Elijah, we will now consider some specific points with regard to Ahaziah. 2 Kings 1 opens with the statement, Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. The full implications of this are seen in chapter 3, where we read, And Misha king of Moab was a sheep master, and rendered unto the king of Israel a hundred thousand lambs, and a hundred thousand rams, with the wool. But it came to pass that when Ahab was dead, that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So, by comparing these verses with the beginning of 2 Kings, we see that part of the background of chapter 1 is the halting of the delivery of thousands of lambs to Israel. This contrasts with the words of the Lord Jesus in John 21 when he said to Peter, Feed my lambs. 2 Kings 1 verse 2 states, And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria, and was sick. 
and he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. The Hebrew word translated lattice occurs 15 times in the Old Testament. On the screen there is an extract from a Strong's Concordance showing the different renderings in the AV. The most common translation is network and the word is usually used of a decorative feature on the pillars of the temple. In Job 18 verse 8 however the word is used by Bildad to refer to some sort of trap and is translated snare. According to David Baird in his book The Education of Job the snare in this verse is a type of net. In the case of 2 Kings 1 verse 2 the lattice, presumably a network of wood or thin metal, gave way or broke and Ahaziah fell through as a result. This contrasts with the net in John 21 which did not break. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, 150 and 3, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. In addition to the breaking of the lattice or network, another greater disaster was associated with the short reign of Ahaziah. This concerned the foolish decision of Jehoshaphat to join with Ahaziah on a proposed maritime expedition. In 2 Chronicles 20 we read, and after this did Jehoshaphat king of Judah join himself with Ahaziah king of Israel who did very wickedly. And he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish. And they made the ships in Ezion Geba. Then Eleazar the son of Dodavar Marishah prophesied against Jehoshaphat saying Because thou hast joined thyself with Ahaziah, Yahweh hath broken thy works. And the ships were broken that they were not able to go to Tarshish. The broken ships, together with the broken lattice, are reminiscent of the incident in Luke 5 when, as in John 21, a great multitude of fishes is provided. However, in Luke 5, the ships begin to sink and the net breaks. We read, And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net brake, and they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship, that they would come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. They were having to rely on their own strength, and, as in the case of Ahaziah, the flesh was found wanting. The failure of the lattice had profound consequences, not only for Ahaziah, but also for the men he sent to Elijah. A total of 153 people are sent by Ahaziah to Elijah. The 153 consisted of three captains, each with 50 men under him. In verse 9 we read, Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty. Verse 11, Again also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. And then finally verse 13, And he sent again a captain of the third fifty with his fifty. Of these 153, 102 would die by fire from heaven. The other 51 only survived because of the humble plea of their captain. If the lattice or network had supported Ahaziah, all 143 would have survived. On the other hand, all the 153 fishes were safely brought to land. When the Samaritan village did not receive Christ, Luke writes, And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou let we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Elisha means God saves, and thus, as Christ had come to save, he came in the spirit of Elisha, not Elijah. The 153 fishes contrast with the 153 men in 2 Kings 1. Two thirds of the 153 men who came to see Elijah were killed. But all 153 fishes were, as it were, saved by Christ.